So we've just gone through calculated columns and measures. Now what I want to do is I just want to go over some uh, dive much deeper into measures because uh, if you if you write and learn DAX well, measures is where the bulk of your uh, your more intermediate and advanced DAX formula are, is going to happen. So that's where we're going to spend uh, a bit of time here. Now the f first thing I actually want to do is I want to show you how to create a measure table. You may or may not have uh, seen how to do this um, before, but I want to recap it because it is a really important uh, technique to organize how you create, where, where you locate your measures for future reference. So very quickly, how you create a measure table is you want to um, create, or you want to go to, you want to go to home, the home ribbon, and you want to go enter data here. We need to create a virtual table where we can store these things. So I'm just going to go enter data here, and then within this table, I'm just going to put a one, and that is all. And I'm going to call this table key measures, and then push enter. And then what that is going to do is it's going to create this table, right? It's going to create this table that we can just have out on the side here. And we're going to use this table to store the measures that we create. And so if I jump back to the report, you'll also see on the right hand side here that this it exists in here. Now I'm just going to now select a measure that I've already created. So this total sales measure, I'm going to select it and then I'm going to go to the modeling ribbon and I'm going to change the home table here. I'm going to put it inside the key measures table and then I'm also going to find my total quantity sold and I'm going to put that inside there as well. Now the last the couple of things we're going to do to finish this off, this column one here, we've got to make sure we hide this. I'm going to hide it and then I'm going to toggle in and out here and then now we have this key measures up the top. And now you can create multiples of these. You can use exactly that same technique and then uh, you can then catalog, essentially catalog your measures. And I highly, highly, highly recommend this. This is just a really great way to organize and then reference your measures. Because ultimately, if you get into writing DAX formula, you could have 50, 50 measures in your model quite easily, quite easily. And uh, you want to be able to very quickly go and find what measure you want to use. And, and also it's for um, your colleagues as well, um, for um, you know, the continuity of your model. You want to make sure that anyone who picks up your model can very quickly go and discover what they, what they want and need. And if you just have your measures scattered everywhere, it is, it is very difficult, trust me on that. Uh, even, even sometimes when, when, I go into, um, when I go and deal with a client and I go in and find existing models and everything is just everywhere, it's even very difficult for me. I, I find it really hard to understand what is going on. So the first thing I do is I actually try and organize things with these measure tables and, and a few other things. Okay, so. Now we've created this measure table. Now we're going to go in and create a, a few more DAX formula. And we're going to go with some simple aggregations. Now we've currently got total sales here, right? And we've also got total quantity sold. Now this is this is this uh, a very similar aggregation. So in this case, uh, it's just sum. So the sum here, the sum, what it does uh, with aggregations, are they, um, they go and reference an entire column and then go and do the aggregation over that entire column. So in this case, inside the sum formula, we, we, we jump to the sales table, and then we just go and sum the entire quantity column. And so let's just jump to that table, just grab another look. And you'll see here that, so the formula itself jumps to this column and just sums up this entire column here. But check this out, check this out. If we create, if we cre if we create a table here, so I'm just going to grab my customers. We create a table here, and then we bring that total quantity sold into this table. You'll see here that we get different results. We get different results here. Now the reason the and the and the formula, the formula, the total quantity sold formula, that it doesn't change at all. It's the same formula for every single. Uh, every single result here. And the reason why we're getting different results is because this table in the background, this table changes its shape based on whatever uh, context it is against. So this Aaron, Aaron Carr, for example, this is creating what is called context, which I'll go into uh, a little bit more in detail uh, in, in, in a, in a uh, following module. But this changes the shape of that table and this aggregation 
go uh, run runs through and then sums up that column which remains. Now there's other aggregations that we can use here. So a, a, a common one would be average, right? So what we can do, what we can do is we can create another measure and we can go average quantity sold. We call it average quantity sold. And then all you've got to do is you've got to go uh, average, find the average function. And then again, you see here that all we've got to do is reference a column name. And so I'm going to reference again the total, uh, I'm going to go quant the total quantity. I'm going to find the quantity column. And I'm going to push enter. And then now if we drag this into this table, you'll see that now we are getting the average quantity sold for this customer and so on and so forth. So we can also do some other simple aggregations. We can do uh, things like min quantity sold, for example. And then we just use min. Find the quantity column, push enter. And it looks like obviously one, we might wanna actually go, let, let's actually try max. I'm just gonna change this round to a max and I'll change the name of the, the uh, measure as well. So we'll see if there are any big buyers. So again, it looks like it's pretty, pretty scattered. Sometimes they buy uh, not many and sometimes they buy a lot. But these, what I'm just trying to reference here are just some simple aggregation uh, DAX formula. Now you might be wondering why do we even need to do this? Because what you can do is you can actually, you can actually grab this quantity column, drag it in here, and by clicking this down arrow here, you, you've got all of these options to select to run those aggregations, right? We can also do a count. Uh, we can also do some slightly more statistical analysis like variance, median. So it's a fair question. Why do you even need to write these simple DAX formula? Well, I am here to say that you have to, in my opinion, you have to write DAX formula. Because if you want to do anything past the simple in uh, simple analysis or simple aggregations in DAX, like things like time intelligence or scenario analysis or uh, statistical analysis, sensitivity analysis, anything that is uh, really powerful analytical work in Power BI, the only way to do that is through DAX formula. There's no way to do that through the custom calculations here. That, if the custom calculations uh, are sufficient for what you're trying to achieve, then go right ahead. But I highly recommend, and I, I recommend this to everyone that I um, that I teach, that I that I go and speak to. You want to be writing DAX formula, no matter how simple. And you always in this in this in these cases want to be starting really simple. You want to be just writing simple aggregations like simple sums, simple averages, simple counts, simple count rows, etc. And then you can branch out into these more advanced calculations down the track. Um, but you can only branch out into more uh, complex things if you start simple, you start with these simple things. One thing I just mentioned was another great aggregation um, formula that I just missed off called count rows. And so say for instance, we wanted to, we'll create another measure here, we'll call it, um, we'll call it total transactions. Say we wanted to, we wanted to calculate the total amount of sales we made to each different client. Well, there's this great aggregation uh, function called count rows. And so all, what, what it does is it just counts up the amount, it just does what it says, it counts up the amount of rows that are left over um, for any filters that are, that are put in place. So in this case, all we've got to do is reference the sales table and then push enter. And then now we can see how many transactions were actually made uh, for each different customer. And then I guess you can work out from these two what, what the average quantity sold is because it's going to be total quantity sold divided by total transactions, obviously. Okay, so we might wrap up. Uh, we might wrap up there, but here I just wanted to highlight this is where you start in DAX. This, these are the simple aggregations that you want to create, and um, always start here. So if you're just starting out, always just work work away at creating some really simple calculations. And then you'll then you'll be able to branch out, and you'll see that you can branch out into more complex things, like uh, especially with time intelligence, um, that we touch on a little bit in this course.